There has been a lot of videos on the internet about these aircraft carriers that carry 6,000 military employees all around the world. But today, we're gonna have a different look into these things and see why they're so important. The international law says that an aircraft carrier could be 14 miles from any country's shore. And that's in a way where the country cannot complain to the aircraft carrier's country. That's the main reason these aircraft carriers are so important. You basically take a military base and take it wherever you want in the water. Like when the Iraq war happened, these aircraft carriers were in the Persian Gulf and the Mediterranean Sea and they attack Iraq from there. We should all know that 80% of Earth's population lives about 60 miles off any shore. And this is another reason why an aircraft carrier is extremely important. First, let's see how many of these carriers you find around the world. There are only 26 aircraft carriers. Brazil, France, Russia, Spain, Thailand each have one. And then we have China, India, Italy, Japan, and the UK, and they each have two. And the US has the most at 11 aircraft carriers. Since the US has 11 of these, and you can find them anywhere in the world, we're gonna talk about these. These 11 aircraft carriers could carry about 5,500 to 6,000 personnel. These aircraft carriers are organized in a way that they technically could have a liftoff every 30 seconds. These aircraft carriers don't have many weapons like destroyers do, and the main defense mechanism are the airplanes that's on them. These aircraft carriers are the biggest targets for the country, and anyone that's in a war with them would like to attack it. And that's why, when aircraft carriers are roaming the seas, if it's from the US, Italy, or Russia, they always have an escort, and different Navy ships and destroyers follow the carrier around. These destroyers have the most advanced weapons on them, and the main reason they're present is that they're protecting this giant target that everybody wants to attack. Another interesting fact is that, except these Navy ships that escort the carrier around, there's also some help from underneath. There are submarines that follow an aircraft carrier around, and they have plenty of personnel themselves, and they're living there for months. So what fuel do these things use? You probably know, but all 11 US aircraft carriers are operated by nuclear power. But every other country, except the French aircraft carrier, are powered by diesel. When we say nuclear, there's basically a reactor on board and it uses nuclear energy to power the whole thing. I don't want to advertise a lot of our videos, but I just want you to understand every fact about this thing. And that means these aircraft carriers do not to be refueled. When they leave the factory, they're full tank to the day they die. And that means the fuel that's put in them when they're built will last about 25 to 30 years and then they're retired. One of the Navy's main goal is to not take these carriers next to any shore unless they really have to. Every aircraft carrier has a supply ship that goes forward and buys the goods and brings it for the carrier. It's kind of like back in the day when 100,000 soldiers are walking across a country. You have some people that go in front, buy all the goods throughout the farms on the way so the soldiers don't starve to death. They would pack them and have them ready for the huge army that's walking. But you have the modern version on these ships. So how do they take the goods and send them to the carrier? Because they don't stop the carrier to receive goods. The supply ship comes next to the carrier 
and matches its speed. They shoot a cable towards the ships and connect each other. They basically create a chairlift that carries pallets of goods. If there is a storm going on and they can't do this, there will be a helicopter used that picks up the pallet from the supply ship and drops it on the carrier's deck. These supply ships don't only bring goods, they also bring the mail. Like when a Navy employee buy something from Amazon and they send it to the Navy ship. You might say if someone actually orders something from a Navy ship, it might take months to get. But that's actually not the case. Since it's sent with express mail, you get it extremely quickly, sometimes even faster than continental USA. These ships look ginormous, but they're actually not that big. The length of the biggest aircraft carrier in the world, meaning the USS Gerald R. Ford, is only 330 meters. And that's in a way where a normal airport needs a 1500 meter runway. That's why you can't just land any airplane on these ships. The airplanes that land on the deck are stopped with a giant rope. Like the F-22 cannot land on an aircraft carrier, but the F-35 can, and that's in a horizontal way, or it could land normally. The F-35 is mainly used by the Navy, but the F-22 is only for the Air Force. The personnel that works on the deck are way more experienced than below, and they have to take their jobs very seriously because it could get dangerous up there. A simple mistake could cause disaster up here, and that's why everybody has to be focused when they're working. Different Navy ships have different rules all around the world, but for the US, the yellow shirts are the plane directors. They basically handle where anything should be parked or moved to. The blue shirts handle aircraft, operate the elevator. The red shirts are the crash and salvage crews. The purple shirts operate the fuel station. The white shirts are the quality control and safety and medical team. And the brown shirts are the line leading officers. On any aircraft carrier, there's probably a hundred aircrafts in it. So where are they? On top, I probably see about 20 of them. It's under the deck. There is a storage area underneath the deck that's operated with an elevator and they take the aircrafts and park them down there. Whenever they need it, they raise it up with the elevator again. If you've seen our video about what life is like on an aircraft carrier, you'll know that not just anybody could go up on the deck. They have to get permission to be on the deck. It has happened where the employees haven't seen the sun for weeks. As you know, aircraft carriers started in World War II and they just kept adding on to them. A lot of people believe that in today's world, these carriers are no good anymore. They are a giant target. There are a lot of people and it's extremely expensive. But what's surprising is that the US does not listen to that. And about four years ago, they introduced their newest aircraft carrier. After World War II, there has not been one day since these aircraft carriers have left the world's ocean. Since then, they have always been on international waters. The reason the US doesn't want to leave these things behind is that they want to be the global superpower, especially in terms of Navy. Because as you know, the US has a bunch of bases all around the world, and you can see it on this map. But even with all that, they keep these Navy ships active all around the world. One of the most important areas that these aircraft carriers operate is the South China Sea. They were in the Persian Gulf before, now they hit up the South China Sea. 
Even though these aircraft carriers are with an escort and they're everywhere, but they're still in danger. And that's because if any country wants to do an act of war, all they have to do is sink one of these aircraft carriers. And that's way easier than attacking American soil. After World War II, no aircraft carrier has been attacked. Because countries that have aircraft carriers are pretty strong in the military department and the chances of it being attacked is quite low. Either way, 26 of these aircraft carriers are active and could be found everywhere. The most interesting about all this is that even though warfare is advancing quickly, but these aircraft carriers are still active in today's ocean and there's no plan on retiring them. How long do you guys think these things will be active in the world's oceans? Please let us know.